somewhere, somehow, somebody said, let's make a balisong machete. Let's see if it's possible. Something that people can take out in the outdoors, beat on, thrash on, chop, carve, whittle. And baton with. And still keep on kicking. And somehow, somebody over at Gerber convince them to give it a shot. And so that is what we have here, folks. We have the Gerber Double Down. This is a USA made with 420 high carbon steel balisong machete. So I'm gonna try and do this on frame here for you, just like your normal design. You have that little tab keeping the handles together. Now they are locked into place. You got these little levers here. We're gonna go through all this today. You squeeze them, it'll catch. You just overcome, you just keep going and boom and then let's see here i always got to kind of look at it make sure i know what i'm doing here yeah there we go you just kind of squeeze the handle pop it into place the lever cl clicks and locks the two handles together and there you have it a balisong machete made here in america <laughs> with an almost seven inch blade and over seven inch handle that we're going to take a look at today so the question is not only should it be made, but who could make it and execute it and actually have it perform? We're gonna find out if Gerber can do it. And we'll talk wow factor versus practicality in its design as I thump on this, guys. I have put it through the ringer and we'll see what it can do, what it can't do. And we're gonna find out who needs and who wants a collapsible machete. But I wanna take a brief time out to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, as well as a new affiliate here at Gideon's Tactical, LA Police Gear. It's amazing to see not only the longevity of their site, they've been around a really long time, but they also carry so many well-known, well-established, reliable brands. Brands like Gerber, Spyderco, Sog, Cold Steel, Leatherman, Streamlight and Surefire, 511 and Vertex, Merrill Boots, Safari Land, Magpul, and their own well-established brand of LA LA police gear, equipment, and apparel. And so it's really exciting to be able to have them not only sponsor the content here on this video, but also just be able to point you guys in a direction that I know is gonna be a place where you can pick up a new pocket knife, a reliable flashlight, maybe update your medical equipment, and EDC bag, whatever it may be that you're looking for. I believe LA Police Gear is gonna probably have it, and you may have even seen it tested and reviewed here on the channel before. So I encourage you guys, check out the link in the description box below, hop on over there, see what they got going on, because I do think that they are an amazing place to be able to pick up much of the equipment and gear that we use here at the channel and what I'm sure a lot of you guys use on a regular basis in our daily living when we're looking for that reliable and durable equipment. So right away, I got to hit this blade, folks, because I have to say this, regardless of what happens on the handle portion that we're going to talk about, Gerber needs to make this exact same knife with just a standard fixed blade design, no folding, no nothing like that, because I was not really expecting a whole lot out of the blade performance, but this thing is crazy. The USA made 420 high carbon. Now Gerber's been using that for a long time. They know what they're doing with that. It's very tough, very durable. Um, you know, watch our strong arm videos that we've done here uh, at the channel as well as through the gauntlet. I mean, that steel is bomb proof and Gerber does a really good job with it. It's not gonna hold its edge for a very long time. You know, you're gonna have to tune up pretty regularly, but this is holding its edge well. And it's not rolling with all of the chopping and batoning particularly that we're doing. And from the handle where the joints are to the tip is 6.75 inches overall. It's an inch and a half wide from edge to spine and then it is going to be a thickness of 0.14. So uh, just a hair over an eighth of an inch thick, definitely more like a machete style. And it has this kind of short saber grind with a secondary relief edge there and a slight, ever so slight recurve right here. And so just seeing all that, I was like, ah, I don't know, I mean, pff, what's gonna happen here? I'm not, not, I'm not expecting a whole lot. This thing can carve and feather stick like a lot of my Scandi ground knives. I mean, it's wild what it can do with the finer work. Uh, it, it was extremely impressive for me, and we'll talk about how that implies with ergonomics here in a little bit for finer work. 
but the edge geometry is just done very, very well for finer tasks. If you want to do a notch, if you want to do a feather stick to get your fire going, you know, those type of things, uh, cordage cutting, any of that type of stuff that you're going to be doing out in the outdoors and just, you know, greenery, going through greenery. If you're using it kind of more like a machete, uh, delimbing stuff, it's going to bite and slice and do very, very well. And I have zero complaints with it. And because of the short saber grind and then the thickness, it works decently as a batoning tool. You can absolutely baton stuff. I would say about two inches in diameter or so or less for kindling. You can absolutely do that with the blade. And it's just wild that it can do all that. And then even in the obviously light greenery as a quote unquote machete is where chopping is going to excel. It can do light chopping. Um, up to about, uh, I would say, I don't know, an inch and a half, slightly thicker than your thumb. When I started hitting hardwood, dead wood, that was thicker than that, uh, it started to have a little bit of trouble. But the edge geometry was fine for any light delimbing, light hacking, light chopping that you're going to do as well. So as a finer tool, it performs as a splitter, it can absolutely do it. And then as a light delimbing chopping tool, it can do that as well. Now on the back spine, they do have this very mild jimping that they say is to grab your batoning stick when you're batoning so it doesn't slide off. I don't think it's needed. It actually kind of causes abuse. I don't know if it does any more on your batoning stick that you're hammering with, but that's why that's there. It's not anything that you could use like as a saw for a notch or anything like that. And I think Gerber needs to do like the single down or something like that, where it is just the standard fixed blade, full tang with an over mold, give us a good polymer sheath, exact same blade. I would use it on a regular basis i think a lot of people wouldn't you know you could make a 10 inch version with this exact same blade steel design and i think a lot of people would gravitate to the performance so i do hope that we'd see hey the single down i'm patenting that <laughs> uh down the line uh, with this exact same material blade shape and design so now let's move on to like the functionality of this tool and just the handle and you know everything going on here now uh, closed up like this it's going to weigh in at 18 ounces so you know for a seven basically just short of seven inch blade i mean that's pretty heavy that's on the heavy side particularly for that thinness obviously that's all in the mechanisms uh, of the handle now we have polymer and i believe stainless steel uh, liners so kind of like polymer uh, handle scales and then uh, steel liners from what i can tell here so we do have a lanyard hole that's really cool and it's kind of like offset works great doesn't get in the way uh, when i first used it i didn't have it i've used it now a couple times and that is a benefit if you are going to be feel like you are going to chop with it pretty regularly it's always good to have but it's nice that they integrated a lanyard hole uh, so then you have your nice tab right there you just have to pull you pop it right off okay so now we're ready to rock and roll so it will not open and function past this point so that's a good kind of like safety mechanism there are these little levers right here that you have to depress and they're on either side so you got to do a pinching motion you depress those and then you open up and if i release them it's then going to lock in that position now you can just depress them the entire time you open it up and it's a pretty smooth action there and you know you got your gears moving very robust gears by the way and pivot uh, and the, that is like, you know, you can tighten it if it ever got loose on you, you know, so that's a really good thing. So from what I can tell, maintenance on this is actually really impressive. All of the um, Torx heads and different things like that are all very um, accessible. So you could pivot and change and, you know, do what you need to do with it. And the maintenance is easy. So then you depress it again, all four, again, pinch it. And if you were to let go, you're good to go. Now it's locked into place. It's not going to move back and forth. And then you've got your little tab here. You do kind of have to fight with it if you do have a lanyard. If not, then you don't have to worry about that. And then you squeeze and you can do it one handed. The first one or two times I kind of had to pound it. So you may have to break it in a little bit, but now it's got that little bead right there and you do have some jimping out the back. So you could do some non-lethal strikes, hammer in a tent peg. You could totally do that with way, the way it is designed. So now here we are, right? So the first thing out of the gate, was I wanted to see how I could actually grip it and carve with it because this is big and blocky up here. And basically, if you just go right to there and choke up on it like so, it's doable. I mean, I can choke up right there and get work done. It's not comfortable. It's not something I want to make five feather sticks for 20 minutes with. Imagine basically something like the center drive. You're basically gripping that and then making feather sticks. So again, 
you know, in a pinch, totally. You can totally do it. It's not something I'm going to go out and want to do every time I go camping. I would rather have, you know, a more contoured, smaller, say, like a Gerber strong arm or the principal or something like that for the finer work. Now, what I did discover, though, was if I backed up and put my middle finger right there, where the cut in is and even though it's blocky it is rounded there are no sharp edges so that's a very good thing up here where all the mechanism is there's not like sharp it's just really blocky uh and, but then they really contoured the rest of it what i found was if i grip it right there and then kind of just rest my finger right there i have definitely enough control to get all of the work that you're seeing in the video everything that you're i'm rolling in right now is a very capable thing and that actually feels very doable i could do that for an extended period of time it doesn't give me epic control over the knife, but enough to get a feather stick done or a simple notch or something like that. Now I'm not gonna be able to carve out a spoon or a bowl with it like that, but I can easily do this. And it feels just kind of like a, a general kind of beefier survival knife in the ergonomics for the closer cutting tasks. Now let's move to this back side here. Now, again, like I said, really contoured. I was very surprised. It's just not like this big square brick back here. They've really contoured, given it some texturing, fills out my large size hands well. When I grip it right there, which is about three inches from the blade, I can do a lot of manipulation. It feels very comfortable. And I could do a lot of really quick, light cuts. You know, if, again, if you're just delimbing maybe some greenery or something like that, really doesn't create any hot spots or issues whatsoever. And, you know, you can shape wood or do whatever you wanted to do with it and I didn't really notice any problems or any concerns. Now, when you back up and you start really hard chopping, right? You back up to right here. Now, if you start going through hard wood that's, I would say, as thick as your wrist or any thicker, it's not fun. You're having to grip really hard, uh, and what I found was with bare hands, I was actually pinching myself a few times. Ooh, ow. See a pinching? Whew, yeah. Uh -uh. Ow. Not even gonna do it. Woo! That bites. So, what's happening, guys, is the slit right here with bare hands, my hand is getting in there, and then because it does flex some, it's pinching my skin. I got a couple pinch marks. So, whatever this is, I don't know, two, in two and a half, three inches. Lighter than that, it was fine, but when I actually had to start putting the nurse on it, at least bare handed, that was not, didn't even want to complete that because there is just a micron of flex and just the vibration through the two handle pieces. It was just not fun. I, I quit. I literally quit doing it because I could not handle it. Now, if you back down to, again, either live greenery, like you would use with most machetes, or if you're doing hard dead wood that's slightly larger than your thumb or smaller, you're fine. And I actually didn't really notice it. Okay, I'm swapping to gloves to see if with gloves you can power through and there's no other issues with thicker wood. It's about an inch and a quarter, probably inch and a half. I mean, look at the bite. It's just crazy. I mean, you can feel the shock because it's flexing. And I did with that swing. Okay. I did disconnect the locking mechanism. So that's something, I mean, just heavy chopping with wood. It's going to happen from time to time. Let's try it one more time here, see what happens. Okay, so same thing again though. That's happening right there. So, I mean, that's gonna pop out when you start doing heavy swings. So if you're doing, you know, 30 minutes of heavier chopping, it's just not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be great. I would definitely wear gloves. It can kind of do it, but it is the least capable out of all of the tasks that I put it through when you start doing that. But surprisingly, overall, again, for this concept of executing this tool, even with all of the uh, huge shock, I mean, and I was putting it on purpose through so much shock, through batoning and chopping of all different types, back splitting, you know, hitting the back spine and making notches and splitting wood, I never had it pop and disengage and be, be something that was an issue. And I never had any of the joints loosen up, start to rattle or any other problems or the locking mechanism show any form of wear. So it's surprisingly impressive so far with the time that I've put on it. 
for again what it is a folding machete. And when it does come time to fold it up, you do just have to squeeze slightly. It makes it very easy then to disengage again, which can be not always good when you are chopping and squeezing it really hard for those heavier chops. But then you will swing it, it comes down, and there's a safety mechanism where it locks again so you don't accidentally snap it on your hands so that you then have to squeeze all four levers again to then close it up and snap it into place. Now this will come with a really nice nylon sheath. I was actually really impressed. It's got PALS webbing with a really good snap, very rigid throughout. You can you know, unfeed it if you want to and put it on your belt. So that's something that is very easily done or put it on LBE system or your backpack or whatever you would like to do. It's nice and solid. You can get a little rattle from the material, but you got elastic bands basically you know like stretchy woven material and then super heavy duty nylon here and a really good um, grab tab that you can then pull very easy to then slide it back out and then when it comes time to putting it back in very easy to do one-handed so you're not fumbling with it and fighting with it so it, it's a good very well-built robust nylon sheath that obviously is a pretty compact package for the larger tool that we're looking at now you could obviously fold it up and just throw it in your pocket it does not have a pocket clip i think that would have been kind of ridiculously cool because this is a ridiculous tool to have as an option for those of you who want to carry it in your pocket but as it currently stands there is no pocket clip that it comes with Okay, so it's been wild so far showing you all that this has going on, but what does it cost? What does it cost to manufacture and come up with the technologies, the designing and making it here in America? Well, if you get this model with the blacked out blade and they have a couple different handle colors, that's gonna run you about $140. You can get the stonewash version for about 130. Now I will have links for you guys over below to Blade HQ that's currently has them available as well as the Gerber website. For, so for those of you who are like, I've just got to try this thing out, that's where they are currently available. And you can look at the description box below and uh, hop on over there and take a look and see what's going on and you know what versions are currently available. So with that being said, <laughs> $140. Uh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of scratch. Is that going to replace a good old fashioned fixed blade like the Gerber Strom Arm, which is like $70 right now. It's literally about half the cost. Now it is half the size, but there's no moving parts. You know, it's bomb proof in every single sense of the word. Of course not. For me, I'm still going to rely on this as my go-to, you know, compact survival knife or, you know, you think of other blades that are out there in that price range that are just a full tang. That's why I sure hope there is a full tang version of this. But just for insanity's sake, could you do it sake and could you actually make it work's sake? Gerber did it. They actually made us a folding machete survival knife that sure there are some little aspects that just it's the nature of two moving parts in a handle that you know they're going to cause a little pinch points at certain points maybe have it pop loose from time to time under very hard chops but i mean the blade is holding up the handle is actually more ergonomic than i thought the locking mechanisms hold tight and for majority of tasks, you could do it if you want to and you want to have a crazy time with a balisong style machete Gerber was able to accomplish it, and it's so cool that they made it here in America versus making it overseas. So I gotta know, you guys gotta start typing, throwing down those comments. Which of you are like, I've now gotta get this. I have to have this in the collection. I've gotta take it out, see what it can do. And which one of you guys are just like, seriously? Yeah, it can be done, but it shouldn't have been done. You know, I'm sure there's gonna be that crowd. I personally am of the opinion that I always love to see um, risk being taken and trying something new. Uh, and I believe that Gerber has done that. And I haven't seen anyone else come out with something like this before. And they've executed it for, for what it is, a, a folding machete. It's hard to complain about what it has going on in its capability for the design, which is just bananas. But want to hear from you guys. It's going to be, I know, a blast just seeing the comments and talking with you. And I'm really curious to see where this goes and what the popularity of it is. I think it will sell better than a lot of us think it will. Um, and who knows? They may make a whole line of these. And I'd love to see a single down as well as I've been saying throughout this video. So, so guys, thanks for coming over and checking out the video. Uh, check out the other video popping up. So 
subscribe if you're not yet a current subscriber. We're throwing up content like this all the time. Let me close this here for us. Let's do that as I'm talking here. Uh, you can check us out on Instagram and you know uh, Facebook, social media, all that stuff. So you can just see what's up and coming. You know, I'm posting stuff all the time there. So if you are following us, you know that I was already working on this tool. And uh, it's just cool. It's cool, the community that we have over there. And uh, guys, until next time, let me see. Let's do this right there. Boom. Always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We never know what we're going to find out there. <laughs> and I'll see you out there.